India, among its vast array of gods, contains one who is as interesting in stories as he is in attributes. The god of beginnings, the god of intellect and the remover of obstacles are some of his most famous titles. He is Ganesh, lord of the Ganas. He has an elephant head and a pot belly and is usually told to be a jovial deity. He is widely worshipped in the state of Maharashtra, perhaps more than the rest of India. Apart from India, Ganesh is also seen in Sri Lanka, Thailand, Bangladesh, Bali and Japan. Ganesh is typically shown with four hands sitting on a lotus or a mouse or sometimes standing. In his arms, he predominantly holds a goad, an axe, a modak which is an Indian sweet and one of his hands is always shown to be in the open palm blessing gesture. Ganesh is the god of intellect or wisdom and his most iconic aspect is his elephant head. His huge eyes and huge ears indicate that he sees and hears everything. However, this can also be treated as a symbol, a message of sorts which tells us how a person should be when seeking wisdom. One must be attentive to every input and not neglect any information for all information is crucial at some or the other point. Further, Ganesh is associated with the removal of obstacles. Hence, the axe in his hands which depicts his vicious aspect when there is a need to be so. In his other hand, he holds a noose which is used for restraining. This might be a suggestion as to how Ganesh deals and how one should deal with day-to-day -day problems. By attempting to control them and use the obstacle to one's advantage and then, if need be, to cut the problem down. In his third hand, Ganesh holds a modak, which is a sweet dear to him. In statues, his trunk is shown as placed close to the modak. This might be an indication to self-appreciation where Ganesh not only blesses his followers but also indulges his own pleasures to his satisfaction. His vahan or vehicle is shown to be mushak or a mouse. As we know, mice proliferate at a highly accelerated rate and are also common pests in the farms and fields. Ganesh using the mouse as his vehicle might be an indication of his dealing with proliferating problems. However, Ganesh is also associated with prosperity and fertility and thus he is associated with snakes who in Indian stories are mostly associated with treasures and fertility. This might be due to their ability to renew or regenerate their skin by periodic shedding which might be a symbol of ever-growing wealth. We are familiar with the story of the birth of Ganesh from a clay statue created by the goddess Parvati who breathed life into him. We also know of his beheading by Mahadev, Parvati's husband, who then resurrected Ganesh with the head of an elephant. But do you know there is another story which gives the origin of this elephant-headed god? An alternate story gives the origins of Ganesh as the son of the elephant-headed goddess Malini and that Mahadev and Parvati simply adopted this child. Now the name Ganesh refers to his role as the master of the Ganas. He is also known as Prathamesh, god of beginnings and is hence worshipped before beginning any work and even before worshipping any other god. Another name, Vignaharta, refers to him as the remover of obstacles. However, there is an interesting aspect to this role. In the Vedas, Rudra, a form of Mahadev, was usually called upon by the sages to hold his ganas back from creating any nuisance during the yagyas. It is said in time this role was taken over by Ganesh as he became the leader of ganas. He being the leader, he was called Vigna Karta that is the one who causes the obstacles and hence worshipping him first was necessary to pacify him so as to prevent any obstacles. This led to the current image of him as Vigna Harta, the destroyer of obstacles. Now in many illustrations, Ganesh sits in the middle of the goddesses Lakshmi and Saraswati, that is the goddess of prosperity and the goddess of knowledge respectively. This is considered to be a representation of the thought that knowledge and prosperity cannot harmoniously coexist without wisdom to balance them. Looking at historical references, the oldest Ganesh statue dates back to the 4th century common era and was found in eastern Afghanistan. The Rig Veda itself has zero references to Ganesh, however the name Ganpati is mentioned twice. But this name appears as a title or an epithet and not exactly as the name of the current deity. Ganesh is believed to have been a Grama Daivat, that is, a village deity who was later incorporated into the mainstream culture. 
This is because of his depiction where he has symbols associated with village and farm life such as axe, goat, snakes and mice. In Maharashtra, the worship of Ganesh was highly popularized by the prime ministers that is the Peshwas who considered Ganesh to be their family deity that is the Kuladaiva. The popularity increased to the point that there is a Ganesh icon present on the door of almost every household in the Maharashtrian state. Ganesh's stories spread to the outer areas of India such as Bali, Thailand, etc. through travelers and traders. His appearance in the Japanese Buddhist traditions probably went along with the propagation of Buddhism through China. We will explore the different aspects of Ganesh in different cultures in our comparative mythology video series. If you found this video interesting then do follow Satyalo, our Instagram page and share this video with your followers and help us reach as many people as we can. Stay tuned, stay educated and last but not the least, know your culture by self-investigating the truth. Shubhaste Panthanas Santu, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.